All right, this following video is the directions for how to complete flat layout problem number 16 in our series of flat layouts for Mr. Combs CAD class. So we're gonna go ahead and start off right away here with a new document. So we're gonna click on the file new up top, drop that down, and now what we're gonna have here is our templates. Okay, and inside here what we're looking for is a GHSA metric. Why am I picking a metric? Because if you look at the answer key, you'll notice in the lower right hand corner a metric box. That is a giveaway that we're using a metric. Since it's on a standard size piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, it's gonna be on a GHSA border. So therefore we're gonna use a GHSA metric. We now see our preview over here to the right. As soon as you see that, go ahead and hit okay. Now, again, when we open up a drawing, SOLIDWORKS is assuming we have a part that we wanna drop in here and set this up so we can make a formal mechanical drawing. Right now we have created no parts. We'll be doing that in a couple more weeks. So when this comes up, I need to come over here to the left where it says model view, hit the red X, and then hit my F key to center the paper up. Now what I wanna do first is we're gonna draw five circles here, okay? And we're gonna to try to center up as best we can on the center of the paper. So I need to go up to the top here where it says sketch, click on my circle tool, Put my first circle in the middle, and I'm gonna start from small and get bigger as I go along. So I'm gonna go a small one, there's one, circle number two, and I keep coming back in and attaching to the original center, so they're all gonna be concentric to each other. So I'm gonna pull a third one, come back in, a fourth one, and last but not least, number five. So when it's done, it looks kinda of like a, a bullseye target that you may see, okay? Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change two of these circles for construction. And what that means is we're gonna make two of these circles dashed. So for instance, I wanna make this outside circle a dash circle or a construction circle. To do that, you have to click on that circle itself so it turns light blue. And then if you look over to the left in the management properties bar, you'll see a box that says for construction. Check that box. Hit your green check mark and you'll now see this one has turned dashed. I also want to do that for this one right here in the middle. So again, to make that to a dashed line, I left click on it, it turns light blue, come to my left and hit for construction. Hit your check mark, and now you have your two construction lines. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna dimension the circles. So I'm gonna dimension from the inside out, okay? So the inside's gonna be my smallest, and according to this, we need to make this inside one 19. So I'm gonna pull that up there and type in one nine and hit my enter key. I'm gonna continue this play from the next circle. I'm gonna go inside here. I'll pull this one down this way towards the metric box. I'm gonna type in 38 for that one there. Okay, and I'll adjust these as I go along. Left click and pull them around. Okay, I'm gonna hit the third one. The third one is gonna be for 82. So I'm gonna pull this one up into the left and type in 82. I go to the fourth one, uh, fourth one here, I'm gonna kinda keep over on this side towards my title block, uh, get pretty close. I don't wanna get this dimension being linear, I wanna really get it to where it is at an angle. So let me come down and pull it this way, there you go. And I need to make that 127. So one, two, seven, and hit your enter key. Last but not least, I'm gonna hit this circle here on the outside, pull that down somewhere in this range. And I'm going to make the biggest circle of all 152. Okay, so I'm going to do some adjusting here. And I'll bring this one back. I'm going to try to keep these two kind of together. And I have a tendency to try to put my dimensions very close to where they are in the drawing. It makes it a lot easier for you to verify you haven't missed anything. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw, like we've done in the past on 7 through 13 and our previous problems, I'm going to draw a center mark through the uh, center of the circle. To do that, I'm gonna go up to my line tool and drop the drop down arrow. I'm gonna click on the center line tool. Now again, I'm gonna hover on my circle where I see this quadrant. You see a little diamond appear at the top and at the sides. Those are quadrants. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hover on that little diamond there, pull up. I haven't clicked on anything at this point. I'm just pulling up. And you'll notice SOLIDWORKS will automatically give me kind of a guideline saying, hey, do you wanna line up with this point? As soon as I see where I'm like me a half inch outside, I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna pull a line down and through the bottom, approximately at the same distance. Left click again, 
and hit escape to deactivate your tool. I'm then going to come back up to the top, drop my line tool one more time, and hit the center line tool a second time. This time, though, I'm going to go over here to the left, looking for that quadrant right there. I'm going to go to click, or not click, excuse me, hover, slightly pull out about a half an inch, left click, pull across, left click again. Now, again, to deactivate my tool, I hit escape. Okay, so now I have a center mark running through my entire piece here. All right, so continuing on. We're going to draw another center line tool. Okay, or another center line. Excuse me. So I'm going to turn my center line tool on and click right here. Now, I want to make sure I'm going to draw a center line that's right attached to the middle of this part. You've got to be really, really careful. I'm going to blow up very big on this so you can see. Okay, this is important. You do not want to get caught on any of these midpoints. You see how these little midpoint lines come up because we're so close to the middle? That's not where I want it. I want it in the center of this circle. So if you need to see it, hover your mouse over one of the circles, and you see this little circle symbol come up. When you see that, put your cursor inside there, left click, and now you can pull your line. Now I'm going to pull a line up and all the way out to the uh, outer edge or the last circle in my uh, five circles. Left click and hit escape to turn off the tool. Turn on your smart dimension tool and I want you to dimension from this horizontal line, vertical horizontal line, to the angled, horizontal, or angled line you just created. I'm going to pull up and type in 15 and hit enter. Now, we're going to create two very small lines. So I'm going to kind of blow up at this upper end up here so you can see how this is going to pan out. Okay, so I'm going to turn my Smart Dimension tool off, roll my mouse into this top piece so you can see it, and I'm going to draw two lines. The first line I want to draw is going to basically be off this circle. Now, right here where this line attaches, I'm going to left-click and pull straight across. Now, try to make sure it's horizontal, okay? If you notice at the end of my pencil there, you see a yellow box with a black line. That is an indication by SOLIDWORKS that my line is currently horizontal. I'm going to continue pulling that until I get over to this vertical construction line. Okay, when I get there, I want to make sure I'm still in that horizontal. As soon as I get there, I'm going to left click, and then I'm just going to pull right up to this quadrant right here and hit escape. Now I'm going to come back and just double check this is horizontal because I see a little bit of a jog right there, which tells me um, this may not be horizontal. So again, if I click on anything and look to my left, I can see some opportunities to fix this. And what I'm looking for is the horizontal add relations button. I'm going to left click on that and now you see it got nice and smooth. All right, at this point, I have the two lines I need to pattern. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to do a circular pattern here. All right, so I'm going to go down here under linear sketch pattern and go to circular. I'm going to hit the circular sketch pattern. Now, the most critical box is box number one. It's blue right now, but when I left click inside and it turns salmon pink, it is the most critical one because it tells me where I'm spinning my pattern around. In this case, I want my pattern to be spun right in the center of this circle. Now, the number of these, I want this 360 degrees, I need 24 of these. So I put a 2, 4 in there, 24. And then the end of these I want to pattern are those two little lines I just created at the top. So line number 1, line number 2. As soon as I have both of those in the box, hit the green check mark. And what you can see now is my, my two little lines pattern, so it looks kind of like a saw blade now. All right, now I'm going to turn my annotations off by going to View, Hide, Show. You don't have necessarily have to do that. It looks like they are off. That's good. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and continue working on. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to come in here and add some circles. And I'm going to add circles on this inside line right here. So let me get out of my properties, turn on my circle tool, and I want that circle to attach right here on this third or this construction circle at this quadrant. So I'm going to left click on the quadrant and pull a circle. Now be careful. We don't want to pull it so short that it automatically locks onto that line. 
I've had ones in the past where if these get close, a tangent relationship gets added and you can't adjust the circle. So go ahead and either make it a little bit short or a little bit beyond there so you don't get caught. Okay, I'm going to dimension the circle to 25. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and make it 25. Okay, so I'm going to hit here, pull out, I'm going to type in 25. Now, I want to pattern this again. So, I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to pattern the circle six times. Okay, so I'm going to go up to my linear sketch pattern and drop it to circular. Remember, the first box is most important. So, I'm going to left click inside of it. I'm going to go down to the center right here where the other one was spun around and left click. Now, the default is four for the number of times I want this. So I'm going to highlight that four and type in a six. Then we go to end to use the pattern. In this case, all I want to pattern is that circle. I'm going to hit my check mark. So now I have six circles. Now you'll notice I'm getting these little numbers here. All these are are telling me what the patterns, how many times I've patterned something. If you don't like them, highlight them, delete. It will not ruin anything. Just highlight and delete. That way you can have a nice clean drawing. Okay, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to draw a center line tool again. So I'm going to need to pattern some things. So I'm going to go here and drop this down to center line. And I'm going to draw a center line from the center of this circle out in this direction here. Okay, somewhere in this way. I'm going to left click. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to attach this line to that center of the circle. So I'm going to hold my control key down. Hit the center of the circle in this line and make those two coincident. So now the line and circle are lined up. Now I'm going to pattern this six times. Okay, so I'm going to take this one line and I'm going to do a pattern there. Okay, so again, I'm going to drop my linear sketch pattern to circular. I'm going to go to the very first box and click inside. I'm going to come down and click on the inside piece or the center of this large circle. I want six of these, and then I want to go ahead and pick the lines. Now, there's a little trick here that I, I'll show in class also, but you can skip some instances. So, for instance, I had some students today asking, Mr. Combs, when I'm done, this line suddenly became solid. Well, what happens here is as we pattern, we'll pattern one here, one here, another one on top of this one, another here, another on top of, or over here, and another on top of this one. I can actually choose which ones I want to skip. So you'll notice these little pink dots. So if I click on this pink dot at the bottom, it will not put a line there. It will skip it. If I put it up here on this line, it will skip this one. So now what it will do is I'm telling it to pattern six times, but do not put a line on top here or here. So really what I'm doing is patterning four. If I hit my check mark, the lines will pattern and this one doesn't get doubled over. So now I've got my pattern set up. So now what I want to do is I need to kind of blow up on the inside center here. Because what I need to create on a small circle is what's called a keyway. Now remember in class today we talked a little bit about keyways and the fact that when you put a round, a round circle on a shaft in order to lock this hole to the shaft, you have to make a cut here in this top part of the circle and then you put a groove in the shaft and you align them and you, you hold the two together with what's called a key. We're going to create the keyway for this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my center rectangle tool. Now, you can really use a rectangle tool in any way you want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a center rectangle. And I'm going to click right here at this quadrant and just draw a rectangle. Now, be careful. We don't want to get this corner caught on there. It will mess everything up. Okay, so, oh, in this case, I'm getting some problems here, too. You'll notice I shifted, and I know some of you are concerned by that. I'm going to take this little star right here in control, and if yours hasn't shifted, you do not need to do this. I'm going to make those two coincident. Those are where those patterns are coming from, and if you shift those off, sometimes I'll mess the pattern up. Now, with that rectangle there, I'm going to do a quick trim. So I'm going to turn on my trim to closest. And blowing up on this, I'm going to get rid of this part of my um, rectangle, this part, this part, here, and here. I'm also going to get rid of some of these lines here. 
and then these little parts of the circle. I think that's it. Let me just double check. And, oop, no, let me control Z that. This is important because this little piece can throw you off. So I'm going to go ahead and trim. You have to sometimes, oh, maybe not, control Z. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I think we'll be okay. Okay. Now, with that said, I'm going to add two dimensions. I'm going to add to this left hand side a height of 2.38. And I'm going to show you what that looks like by going over here to the left. Pull this up, go over here to the left, and where it says none document right here, I'm going to drop that down to 0 0.12. Now you can see it. I'm going to hit this top line. I'm going to pull this out to my right. I'm going to make that 4.76. Okay, now it's shifted. We're going to fix this. Okay, now in this case here, I'm also going to go over to the non document and do a 0.12. You'll see here that we kind of lost part of our circle. Okay, I lost that part right there. So I'm going to delete that and kind of drag the circle around to where it touches. Okay, now this also got shifted. Here's the midpoint of this top line. I'm going to left click on it, hit my control key, and hit this vertical line right here and make the two coincident. Okay. Just going to back up and double check my patterns still look good. It looks like everything's still in alignment. That is a good sign. So I'll hit my green check mark under the properties tab. Now, we are going to change this. Instead of having these two dimensions here, we're going to add a note off this corner of this cut. So going to my annotation toolbar, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to hit the note tool. I'm going to come in and I'm going to click right here on this corner. You'll see an arrowhead pop up. And then I'm going to come out here and pull up in between my 82 and my 25 and left click. Now, I like to keep all my leaders, that's what these lines are called, looking the same. So in this case, these are all bent. Well, if you look to your left, you can create bent leaders. So I'm going to go right here to this middle box where it says bent leader, left click. Now, I don't need to change the font on this. I'm just going to type in the following, 4.76 space caps lock on x 2.38 space k e w a y k e y w a y keyway and then I'm going to hit my check mark okay so now there's the note at this point I'm going to come back and highlight the 4.76 and delete the 2.38 and delete and continue on with the rest of my dimensions so at this point I can add a title to the bottom Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my title at the bottom, which would be uh, Solver's Problem 16, Ratchet Wheel. So I'm going to take my note tool again, blow up just below this part. I'm going to drop this in place. I'm going to take and drop this font to font size 12, keeping it being Arial. It's going to be bold, underlined, and centered. I'm going to type in the following, caps lock on, SWX, short for SolidWorks. Problem. Number 16, space dash space, ratchet wheel. As soon as you're done with that, come over to the green check mark where it says note. Hit that green check mark. You can left click and drag this where you need it. Okay, so now looking at some of my dimensions. All right, for instance, I need to go up here to this number 19 in this corner. And you'll notice on the drawing, this one is stacked on top of each other. That is called a limit dimension, and basically it's telling the builder they have some tolerance when they cut that hole that it could be anywhere between 19 and 19.5, 19.05 millimeters wide. Well, to change this, just like anything else, you left click on it. If you look towards your left, you will see there's a property button over here, and one of them says tolerance and precision. This top box is your tolerance. I want you to drop this down to the word limit. And what that's going to do is tell the person building you have a limit on how big this hole can be. It can be anywhere from 19 to 19.05 millimeters. So I click on that, and you'll now notice the two numbers stack on top of each other. But the top number needs to be 0 0.05 bigger. Well, if you look to the left over here in these boxes, the top number I'm going to add in this box 0 0.05 and hit Enter. And you'll now notice it's now 19.05. 
Now off the back of it, it's going to say ream. So I'm going to put my cursor in this white dimension text box to the left. And with my caps lock on, hit my space bar and hit type in ream. I'm going to hit my check mark to indicate that one's done. Okay, so now what I want to do is just verify real quickly against my answer key. Am I, do I have all the proper numbers and stuff in here? I do notice right away I need a 25 and it should say six holes next to it. So I highlight the 25 and come into dimension text, put my cursor at the back, space, six, H-O-L-E-S. I need to look over here. I see where it says 38, but in front of it, it says hub. So what I'm going to do is left click on the 38, over here to the left in the dimension text box, put my cursor inside the front though this time, type in H-U-B space. Hit your check mark. I'm also missing one more dimension at the top. I see a 15 degree, but I also should see a 90 degree. So I'm going to take my smart dimension, and I'm going to dimension from this line here to this horizontal here, pull up, and then I'm going to flip my arrowheads. I'm going to say OK for the driven dimension because it knows it's 90. And then I'm going to highlight, and you'll see a little dot at the back of each arrow. Left click on that dot to flip that arrowhead inside. Now at this point, if I hit my F key, the drawing is done. The only thing left to do is to work on the title block over here to the right. Now the answer key title block I have provided for you is missing one key element. I forgot to give it a title. So what I'm going to do is turn off my dimensioning tool, come over here to the title, double click on the word SOLIDWORKS drawing. We are going to call this ratchet wheel. So caps lock on, ratchet, wheel. Click outside of it, and if you want to adjust it, I'm just going to left click and drag it, kind of put it right where eyeball middle is. That looks good. GHS student, double click. You put your first initial of your first name and your last name. Again, adjust it as you need to. I'll slide my more over towards the drawn by. That looks good. The date, nine. 26, 19, click outside the box. Adjust your date as you need to. Period, 2B, check, adjust if you want to. And at this point, I hit my F key, I have completed this drawing. So at this point, I want to quickly do a file save as, which you should have done much earlier. I should have done pretty much five circles. But at this point, I'm going to do a save as. I want to make sure that this is going into my H drive. Under my CAD folder, under flat layout, if you have that folder. If not, just put in your CAD folder. I want you to name this ACC space 16 underscore your last name. I'm going to add a 2B at the end so I can keep it distinguished from the other classes. I'm going to hit save now. Your final last step then is to print and submit this in. So now I'm going to go up here to file hit the word print or I could just hit the printer button at the top make sure I'm printing to the correct room okay in our case we're in L108 so I'm gonna go to the L108 T lab and I'm gonna hit OK at that point grab your paper from the printer turn it into the collection box go back to your seat and begin working on problem number 17 at any time you want to rewind this listen to it at your own pace you're more than welcome to. This will be sent to my archives on my channel for Rob Combs. Otherwise, good luck. Take care.